Uh, once again, thanks for staying. My name is Tracy Brown. I'm a reporter at the LA Times, and uh, please help me with uh, warmly welcome the cast, including uh, Kurt Russell. <laughs> Wyatt Russell. <laughs> Anna Sawai. Ren Watabe. Kiersey Clemens. Mari Yamamoto. And Eliza Lazowski. Um, hi, thanks for, well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you for here. Being here. Um, well, everyone here just saw episode five. And because of the way episode five ended, I do have to start with Kiersey. What's up with me? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Guys, I just asked which what episode five was. Which one is episode five? What are you talking about? The phone call? Yeah, it's the phone call. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I can't tell you what's up with her, but you're gonna find out in like two more episodes. All right. uh, can you talk a little bit about approaching, you know, we clearly, May has a secret, but what is it like to approach a character, you know, who obviously has a secret, but you can't play it too obviously? I mean, she's a very guarded person, so you would assume someone that guarded um, is hiding things. Um, I don't think it really mattered what the secret was. I just knew that it was a secret and y'all can't know. So um, I didn't necessarily have all of the details of what that was yet, all of the nuances of it when we started the show, but I knew just enough, which I can't tell you right now or ever, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it I, I can't like say anything. Like, <laughs> all right, everyone. I tried. <laughs> She's too good. Um, I guess I uh, start with the obvious, Kurt and Wyatt. Uh, what was it like for the two of you to to work on this together? To you know, it's a very unique situation where you're you're playing the same person at different times in their life. Um, like, do you talk about it? Did you just watch each other, or did you do your own thing? Well, the you know, the uh, presentation arrived and they called and said, you know, would you be interested in doing this? I mean, um, playing the same character. That was that was clearly the, the thing that drew us to this, aside from the fact that we said then next, well, what, what is it? Is it? Well, it's Godzilla, you know, okay. <laughs> that could be good, you know, or maybe not, you know, so uh, kind of... A, realized after talking to everybody that it was going to be up you know kind of on an epic scale and uh, we the, you got to understand that we, that, that we it was not written for us it was just written and then it was a casting idea so it was you know basically thrust upon us if we were going to do it to make the idea uh, be a good one as opposed to a bad one and um, that meant uh, finding a way to uh, basically create a character that we could both play. We have similar idiosyncrasies, um, but we have different rhythms. And so, um, you know, it was, it was an acting challenge. It was kind of fun and uh, a lot of fun, uh, especially in the creative process of it with the guys. Um, I just, I thought that it was also a pretty good mystery. And uh, following Anna's character, meeting her, her brother, and she doesn't know she had, and whatnot. Um, the backdrop of the monster is always being there, but this was really about the people. The, it was character driven, and uh, we thought that it was an opportunity to do something really um, well. It's never been done before. Uh, we kind of discovered that no known actors, uh, father and son, played the same role, and uh, it was fun to watch Wyatt lay it down and 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 kind of try to pick up on, as an older man, what he was establishing as a younger man. So that was fun. <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was um, 
I mean, the immediate thought was like, oh God, this is, <laughs> this could be a terrible idea. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, you just never know. And um, with these type of movies, monster movies, anything that involves this type of like epic scale, comic book movies, you just want them to be, or I should say, I always pine for them to be more about people because then if the people are really interesting and you're invested in them, then the monsters and whatever the, um, you know, the, the effects driven things, they, they, they're they much more interesting. And that was the challenge that Apple sort of set out to, to you know, to go do. And uh, we knew that all that stuff was going to be great, you know, like they, they did an incredible job with, with the effects. And you just knew that was going to be there. So the backdrop was always like, well, if we suck, <laughs> monsters probably won't. Um, uh, but yeah, it was really fun to work with my dad. Before the show started, like he said, it was a casting, just the casting idea. Ronna Kress, who's the casting director, she was like, this would be a good idea. And we, we, we were like, yeah, that would be a good idea. So let's make the character as as good as the idea is, um, because he links the time periods together, and it was you know important that that be established in a strong way, so that everybody else can can shine. And 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 it was amazing to be able to work with the cast that mostly I was working with. I never got to work with my dad, obviously, because we're in different timelines. But uh, Mari and Anders, who. Uh, isn't here with us tonight, but like it was a blessing when you get on set and you realize like, okay, yeah, wow, I got these great actors to work with. It's gonna make it so much easier for me, um, even though I didn't get to work with, with my dad, um, which may have ended up being a good thing. I don't know, uh, but yeah. Um, well, I mean, this whole this whole show, uh, thematically, I guess, in the show is a family affair. Um, Anna, this episode was was the big Kate backstory episode. Uh, and, you know, I think like, at what point, you know, reading and picking up and building Kate, did you realize, oh, like how different this show is compared to what you think? I think when a lot of people just think of like this is a Godzilla TV show versus what we get on screen. Um, I feel like. Reading the first couple of episodes, it really felt like Kate is just the victim of everything that has happened um, on G-Day and then her dad abandoning her. Um, and I was kind of worried that it was gonna fall flat. But then when I read these episodes, I started to realize that, oh, she's she's mad at herself. She's It's not just her dad, but she's really, um, she's unable to forgive herself for what she couldn't do. And that felt like it, get, it gave so much depth to the character and I knew that it was gonna be more interesting to play um, all her like regrets face towards her. And so, um, yeah, I think reading these episodes, I was like, oh my gosh, this can actually be more interesting than um, it may seem if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ren, um, this is, <laughs> no, I mean, this is your first, I mean, this is your first big TV show. I'm just curious, you know, I just wanna hear like what this experience has been like for you. Cause like Godzilla is a big thing. And like, what was the learning curve like? Sure, um, this was a rich and evocative experience for me, um, more so about, you know, more than about Godzilla, it was, I don't know, it was more than that to me. Um, I played a character that had um, a backstory, um, a bit of authenticity to him. Um, I don't know, I just try to do what was on the script, um, try to focus on the character, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. He's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it well. Um, and this episode, I mean, we get we finally get to see a little bit of like Kentaro levity. You got the the commercial ditties, you're, like singing. You're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Um, 
Mari, we didn't really get to see uh, Dr. Mira in this episode. Can you talk a little bit about her and what what was it about her that interested you, I guess? What, what was intriguing about her to you? Right. Um, so when I first read the script, I, I was sort of um, scared in a way, I guess, because I thought she's not possible. Like somebody like her couldn't have existed. And if I can't believe her or believe her existence, how am I going to embody her? So that was kind of the jumping off point. And then, uh, so to make myself as an actor believe that she was possible, I did a lot of research about, you know, that time era, which is also like another fascinating aspect. I just, I'm so inspired by post-war Japan because it's such a, um, it's an, a time of utter devastation. And the fortitude that it took for people to kind of say, we're still going to find a way to get through this and thrive as a people again. We built this country again. There's something so moving in it for me. And I feel like that's where Keiko's origin story comes from. And so I was definitely drawn to that aspect. But um, going back to the research bit of it, um, I found out that the um, Fulbright scholarships in Japan started in the late 40s and that um, there were some women, very few, but there were some women that came to America to get a higher education. So um, when I saw that, I thought, oh, she's an anomaly, but she could have totally existed. And then I was able to give myself permission to believe that a Japanese woman could have done this. And then, yeah, it was super exciting to get to play a Japanese woman that I'd never seen in Hollywood before. So yeah, all of those things were really exciting for me. Um, Aliza, I, have, I definitely have questions about Duval, but I have to take this opportunity to ask. Most people I talk to about Godzilla, right? In, in Japan, in North America, Godzilla is like an icon. Like what, not that you speak for all of Europe, but. <laughs> But like, how big of a deal is Godzilla over there? Godzilla's been around. It's in Europe. It's all over the world, right? I mean, it's been part of our pop culture for so long. And um, I guess, I mean, the stories in the show reflect that, too. It's like it's a global affair. You, know? you never know when he's going to show up. Uh, it's always a massive event. And he could show up in Europe just as much as in L.A. Or, like, you know, I just flew from London. For all I know, he's over there right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously you can't tell me everything, like what's up with Duval, but can you, you know, what was, what was interesting about her to you? What, what can you tell us about her to help us understand? Yeah, she's a woman of mystery, what can I say? But then so are a lot of the characters in this show to a certain extent. Um, <clears throat> she was described in like the second script as, you know, a, a woman with a black bomber jacket is walking down the street with her hands in her pocket. And the hands in the pocket thing, I was like, okay, Something very cool about her, she's in control, but then it's not any kind of bomber jacket, you know, like there's different types. <laughs> has to be clean, has to be sharp. I imagine her like a like a feather, like I kind of visualize, I don't know why. Like aerodynamic, light on her feet, but then there's like there's a shape of a feather where there's like a sharp end to it, like a like a like a spike, you know? Um and uh, yeah, like there's some images where I sort of feel like they've turned Duval into the Terminator. Um, <laughs> you know, it wasn't my intention, but if Arnold Schwarzenegger wants to come into season two with us, like, <laughs> you know. Right, just cross over all the franchises. I am <laughs> um, curious, because this is, this is, I mean, this was episode five, we're halfway through. This is a very, like, right audience, this is a slow burn show. Yeah. like. It takes it takes time. You're drawn in, but it takes time. Um, I'm curious for the actors, like how much do you know beforehand? Because you know, TV. They're making TV. I know they're usually writing TV while you're shooting. Um, like, how aware are you? Like, for example, how aware are the 2015 people about what's happening in the 50s, and vice versa? Like, does that inform what you're doing? Do you mean how aware are the 2015 actors of what's going on in the in the 1950s storyline? Like or yes. or um, 
More th- yeah, like not in character, but outside. R- oh of, right. As an actor, what are you already like aware of? Like, what are you working with? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, sometimes you know more things than you did last time. Um, uh, that it is a TV show, <laughs> so you gotta wait for the scripts. Um, I think coming in, you you read a few of them and you get an idea, and you can pick, you know, the brain of Matt Fraction and Chris Black, but you also have to trust them that your character is going where they say it's going um, because it's not a movie. So you're really putting a lot of trust into them. Um, and that's all that we could all really do. And I mean, on, not all we could do. And on top of that, having to stand your ground, I think that's really important, protecting the integrity of the character. Um, we're the only ones who have control. I mean, right now, I'm, you can't make me do something I don't want to do unless, you know, the AI thing happens. Then I guess I'm screwed. (laughs) Y'all can do whatever you want, I guess. Uh, But yeah, as of right now, to do the show and to, again, protect the character, you have to be able to say no. Um. It's difficult because, so in some uh, TV, you do know what the last line of the show is, or you do know at least what the last conceit of the show is trying to be, so you can work your way there. This was not like that. Um, And I think we saw three uh, episodes before, you know, we signed on. Um, And then as you go, yeah, you you gotta work on you know, with everybody on getting your character to a point and also getting them, the people who are, you know, Matt and Chris, who've got so much in their head. They have every character in their head. They have every monster in their head. They're dealing with, you know, different companies. There's lots of different companies that are involved with this and trying to get, um, you know, keep all of that information in their head all while, you know, there's things that you can do as an actor in conversations with them of, you know, feeling like where your character's wanting to go. For us, it was feeling where that, one character wants to go from two different sides and you've you know you've got to keep that in your mind as a performance but you also have to sort of guide your character to that place and so with what you're doing sometimes they'll look at it in um dailies dailies are like you know I'm sure everybody knows what dailies are but but if 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 you don't they're they're when you um finish the day dailies are everything that's in the can that day and then ev- and the producers and directors they all look at it and see what's working and what's not and what scenes are good and what takes for good. And if you really have a strong sense of where you're going, people will see the dailies and they'll go, oh, that really worked. And then that you can direct them in that, in that um, certain way as long as you have a strong sense of where you're going. And you know, that, that can be difficult too, so w- w- especially when it's not written. And you know, that, that's, that's a challenge for sure, no doubt about it. It's kind of hard to talk about this show. Um, um, this is difficult to do because the show constantly uh, is a reveal of mysteries of the people, of how they're dealing with the monsters, of how they're dealing with themselves and with each other. And um, it may sound like we um, <laughs> we're run it was a little bit of a you know running running out of control thing, uh, but our conversations with with the showrunner, Chris, and with the head writer, Matt, were constant. There was a lot of involvement. And uh, I'll be honest, it was um, challenging, but in a good way. All movies are. And uh, we, had a, we, had a, we had one thing that we knew we always had. We had really good actors. So we said, you know, those people know that they're not going to violate their character, which probably made it much more difficult. But we were on the fly, as it were. But we, you know, we stayed two, three ahead in terms of talking about it, knowing where it was going, always improving it, always solidifying the characters uh, to be able to drop Easter eggs and, and then see how they exploded. Big booms. Um, 
Kurt, I, I I did have a question because for you, it's been a while since you've you've done television. Like, what what about this format? You know, this doing this? yeah. Let's see. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are we in? Two thousand twenty-three. So, nineteen seventy-nine was the last time I did a TV show. <laughs> Uh, but what was like? That's what why I was the worst long? of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> or how different? Or what did you enjoy about like the long form, I guess, series process? Because you're you're with this character much longer than you would be, I guess, you know, in in, in a film. Well, when you're going to do ten hours with five different directors, you're going to do five movies back to back to back to back to back, and you're writing them at the same time with the guys they know in general where we're going and we all knew in general where we were going but um like i said it was challenging it was just a challenge that's all uh for me um i did not like the process period flat out <laughs> end of statement um i like i like knowing what the last line of the movie is and then being able to reverse engineer everything <laughs> And if you some, see some of the movies I've done, you see a lot of that in it. <laughs> but it has, to be, uh, it has to be done in a way that is continually moving the story forward to an end in an entertaining fashion with hopefully uh, characters that are, 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 are touching you. One of the things that I was very adamant about was if we're going to do this, let's do something really good and by that I mean, I've never seen any of these mo monster movies or whatever that have any human emotion in them that really touched me. If you hang around till nine and 10, you'll get it. You'll get a lot of it, more than anything in this, in this particular zone has ever had. I mean, that's the nice thing about talking to people that have seen all 10, they can't, they're shocked. They, they, they're just shocked. And that's, that's nice. So that means you all have to wait a few more weeks. <laughs> um, I think one, one thing when I think about like Hollywood version of like Godzilla shows, it's, it f often feels very separate from like the long history that exists of Godzilla. Like we obviously we all know Godzilla because we know Godzilla, but each thing feels new. Not him. Oh, <laughs> never, never seen, seen Godzilla one. anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go, I don't want to interrupt oh, your question. I'm just curious. Does that mean you didn't know he existed, or you just didn't My watch ignorance. a movie? Um, uh, if I didn't know existed, if he existed, <laughs> then I'd actually have a, a problem. Um, I didn't know he existed, uh, but I I had never watched one. Been asked this question a lot. I don't know why. I I, I wasn't a fan of uh, monster movies because I, I uh, without alienating anything, I, I I I was more interested in stories that made me cry, or that made me laugh, or that gave me a visceral response. The the could have been because I grew up with it. I have no idea. I really don't. I, like whether I just saw the movies and I was like, I don't know. Like Transformers, like puts me to sleep. Legitimately, I fell asleep in Transformers, <laughs> and 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 so the, the the technical aspect of like wow, look at that thing, it's super cool. But over over a two hour period, I'm like, okay, I need something else to get me going. And so I I never would, would, was drawn to them. It wasn't that I didn't like them. It wasn't that. But comic book movies is the same thing. I got asked about the Marvel thing. I never saw Marvel, but I never saw a Marvel movie. I, I it just I never saw it. It worked to my benefit because I, I think. Because I only ever wanted to be like, well, how do I make the character real? Like, so that you'll care about the comic book stuff and that you'll care about the, the Godzilla stuff. When you watch the 54 Godzilla, um, Godzilla doesn't come into it for an hour. And it's all about what Mari was talking about. It's all about the, the, the aftermath of World War II. It's all about uh, people's in that time period in Japan, their, their fears, and, and you can see it on every actor's face. You can see it on every shot. You can see it, and it per, it's pervasive in the movie. Um, and so a, as technology got great, like, yeah, they relied on it, and they went away from those stories. And the idea with, with this, when we talked to Chris and Matt and Legendary and Apple when we first came to it, was like they want to get back to 1954 version of Godzilla more so than 
and the Godzillas we've seen, um, just because we've we kind of we kind of seen it, you know, we kind of kind of been conditioned, and so now it's like, hey, like let's use what's great about it, and then make the stories as good as the monsters. Um, so yeah, I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, especially because you know it relates to I think the realness, right? What's real and what what's great about the show is so much of it does feel real. Like it could, even though there's a giant monster that's destroying towns, a lot of it feels real. Um, but where I was going with the, the f question is, um, a lot of the, the Hollywood shows kind of separate, there's like a, there's like a, it's like a, it's broken from like its history of, of what Godzilla means in Japan, like his long history. So I was wanted to ask like Mari, Anna, Ren, like just by being in it, you, you sort of kind of c connect the thread back to be, to like, Godzilla's origins, but this show you've seen with like the first episode, like takes like they you go all the way to Japan to start the story. Like uh, I guess what was it? What does it mean for for the three of you to be you know kind of that bridge? I guess as a Japanese person, um, there is a little bit of a frustration that our material is often um, made in Hollywood projects, but not a lot of times. Do they use Japanese actors, or it's not really authentically portrayed? Um, and as someone who was going to be part of this project, I really wanted to get it right. Um, and so it was great that the producers and creators were very open to having, like, Ren, especially, like, um, pitch in about the lines if it didn't feel right. It's really hard to translate English lines into Japanese accurately because the language is just different. It, the construct is different. And so we would need to change the vocabulary a little bit, things like that. Um, or even just seeing the Western crew collaborate with the Japanese crew in Tokyo, um, despite the little um, difficulties, they made it work. And so um, being able to partake in something that was originally Japanese um, and bring it to an international audience um, and to have Japanese people watch it and say that is that is our Japan, that is um, done correctly, I guess to me was something that um, was very um, special and I'm really proud of what we were able to achieve. Um, I think for me, I get to play a character from the time period that Godzilla, the original Godzilla was born. So that felt like an incredible full circle in a way, because the first time you know I saw Godzilla was a 1954 film. And um, I think one of my favorite scenes um, is the Castle Bravo um, bikini at all scene. And it was, um, it meant a lot for me to be able to embody what you said has been missing in the American sort of um, depictions of Godzilla, the, pers the original perspective of, no, 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 this is where it started. You know, this is what it meant for us. And um, I hear stories of um, Godzilla being screened and how Japanese audiences were just, you know, you could hear the crying in the audience, you know, when it first came out, and um, to be able to, oh yeah, and it was the scene, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the scene, but it's basically um, Keiko trying to stop the detonation of the bomb and Shaw trying to stop Keiko. And um, the day before we were rehearsing and the director of that scene, Leslie Hope, she said, why don't we do this part where after Lee tackles Keiko, why don't we do that in Japanese? And then it kind of all clicked and it became such a visceral moment and I felt very connected to my ancestors in a way, like it's like a primal scream in a way. And I hope that, you know, I was able to embody all of that. So it, that, that meant a lot to me. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, it's I try to not get too caught up in 
being like, I'm Japanese. This is supposed to be like this. I think that's always difficult because this is a series that's made by um, American people. But with this show, there is some reality to it through Mar Mars' character, my character, and Anna's character. We're portraying, uh, we're portraying like um, pretty much like real Japanese people, and I think we're just lucky to have that opportunity. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> A lot of subtitles. <laughs> that's great. I love subtitles. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's my point. I think yeah. Mel Gibson cracked the code. I remember talking to an agent uh, who was handling Mel, and I said, what's he up to? What's going on? And they, you know, he's doing this thing, I don't know, Passion of the Christ. And so I was talking about it, and he wasn't very he was worried about it. He got his money into it and all this. And I said, well, tell him what's it about? And then, you know, 12 Stations of the Cross, and I think he said, they don't speak English in it. And I, my, I went, well, that sounds good. <laughs> it's authentic. That's what's amazing about, I think, these three, and at least, they lend authenticity to it because they're authentic. <laughs> and that's very, very different, I think, about what we've been seeing in terms of the Godzilla world. You know, So it's nice to get into the people because they're going to have to be dealing with it. They're, they're the real people. Um, this is right. It's, it's, it's a global show. The, the show takes you all right. You're you start in Japan. You're in San Francisco. You're in Alaska. Uh, I am curious about, you know, like how, how location kind of helps like being in these actual places helps inform like versus like a, like a green screen set. Yeah, I mean, it's a got a big look, and it is. We went to Tokyo, Hawaii, man, outside of Vancouver. Um, that's you know, I think that's a one of the things people are enjoying about the show is that it has a big look to it. It has a big feel. It, it seems to match up well with the big lizard. You know. <laughs> well, speaking of the big lizard, I do have a very important acting question. How hard is it to act opposite Godzilla? It's just those baby blue eyes, you know, like, what can you do? <laughs> that makes it easy. <laughs> um, he's amazing. Has obviously the experience and such a humbling experience for us, and thank you. <laughs> um, he's a writer as well, so an incredible understanding of what makes a good scene. And all of his suggestions make, from an acting point of view, going from A to B in the scene just so much smoother. And um, thank you for teaching us um, and making us try to not drop the ball <laughs> and, and be better. Yeah. We had a good time. <laughs> about uh, imagining that Godzilla was there. Oh yeah, imagining Godzilla was there. Any of the monsters? Um, I don't know. I kind of just like imagined if they said, oh, this one's kind of slimy and whatever, I would think, ooh, okay, I'm disgusted by this one. I'm going to imagine the most disgusting thing I can think of. Like, you know, just using my imagination. <laughs> like I do. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's It's not really that difficult <laughs> you know I feel like I don't need to see Godzilla to understand that that would be fucking terrifying <laughs> you know I don't want to die that way I don't want that to happen um but and even it was, sometimes we would get to see the the previs the the photos or whatever they had but also descriptors really helped I was saying that I feel like when they would tell us again like this one is slimy or this one would smell really bad we were talking about how the first time that Godzilla's like, rawr, <laughs> someone was like, yeah, rawr, someone was like, what does his breath smell like? <laughs> like, is it terrible? Um, stuff like that. I can't see that from a photo of Godzilla. That's, you know, words were actually really informative. I don't know, that's just me. What's that? But the Pra monsters practical. are real, right? Uh, yeah. So we don't even have to visualize, I guess, yeah. is the whole point. Practical, working with practical effects is always better, always easier. 
Um, and there was a mix of that on this. So you can mix practical and mix computer generated stuff. And uh, it just makes it a, a lot easier when at least the sets that you're on are practical. And that was what was cool about this is that a lot of the sets were practical. Um, the, the, the set in one uh, where Keiko gets taken down the, down down by the by the mini bugs uh, it was really cool practical um, the 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 Lawton submarine that was a real set a real submarine that shook um, so you're on it and you're doing things and so it just helps you out and so you're not the only one like doing this <laughs> and then they're like we'll put camera shake in afterwards and you're like but I look like an asshole like <laughs> uh, right now. <laughs> we had a little bit of that when, uh, let's see, are they there yet? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not yet. No. But, yeah. Okay, forget but it. Yeah, we, we had a problem visualizing because of the sun, right? <laughs> Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> um, but yeah, we can't tell you, I guess. Uh, how was, how was the, the, the frozen icy tundra monster? <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of... We c we saw what it the what is it called the previs? Yeah, yeah. the little clips. We, we saw a general <coughs> concept of it, assuming it would be a lot better than what we were looking at. But uh, for me, I'm looking at your T-shirt there, and it was very reminiscent for me because back in the day um, <laughs> when we did the thing, we were on a glacier for six weeks. We lived on it, and uh, I was flying with John Carpenter and I were from helicopters around it and stuff. And so every day we'd go up from where we were down below, fly the helicopters up to uh, up to the location on top of the glacier. And the interesting thing about it was that uh, during that time when we were shooting up there, it was actually quite warm. It wasn't cold when we when we did that movie there. It was uh, it was cold, <laughs> but it was uh, so we had to deal with that. It was very slippery. Uh, not not too easy to get around, but um, the vastness, some of the beauty up there, the vastness of that up there was spectacular to spend the day up there and that. Made you want to spend the night and wake up and see the sun come up there. Um, on a show like this, like it's it's kind of right, it's a mystery, things are unfolding. Uh, but I always want to know if, if, if there's a moment as an actor when you realize, oh, like this is, now I get the character. Like this now, I get this person. Like, is does that ever happen? Hopefully, earlier than later. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, earlier than later. Um, I think that there's always a moment where at the end of a show where you're like, I kind of got the character now. If I could go back, like, I, actors say that all the time. Um, and the hope was on this that. You know, you'd you'd we'd be able to work with Matt and Chris and figure that out so that when when we were getting there, we knew what we were getting, and it wasn't like, oh yeah, you know, it's usually not a good sign when that happens. Um, and so, uh, you know, th this one was was again a little different because it wasn't written, but I I think that, you know, Mari, you can speak to it, but when for us again different pods, so. Can only sort of speak for in terms of the shooting when what we were doing. Um, the episode six, which you haven't seen yet, so I can't talk about it. So never mind. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that too. I wanted yeah. to say something, and I was like, no. Yeah, no, I can't talk about it. But episode six for for me was like, uh, uh, like okay, like this is this is this took on a. The, the way the director decided to shoot this sequence and how she shot it, Merzi was like, "Oh, okay, okay. This is m she's making more of this than is on the page, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm seeing why she's doing what she's doing. It was great that way. So, watch episode six. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to add the the scene that we can't talk about that he's talking about. Um, it was the first time that." you, me, and Anders, the three of us got to shoot in a place that wasn't just the three of us remote somewhere exploring, right? So there was like more context of like what time period it was and yeah. what the, you know, what us being together in like the world meant and things like that. So yeah, yeah that I think that added like a lot for us. Yeah. So watch 106. <laughs> yeah. You know, the slow burn you referred to. Um, 
five is where it begins to change. If you've seen one through four and then you get to five, you, you can feel that at the end of five, things are about to change. And they do. <laughs> they, they, they do, and it starts, six starts to, un, you start to understand a lot more things. And then you begin to unravel some of the mysteries that have been set in place. I wish we could talk about the other episodes. <laughs> have you seen them all? I've seen through eight. I've been saving nine and ten because I know things happen. Yeah. <laughs> then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's true. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, you know, we, yeah, as you mentioned, there's, there's two pods here because you're, you're in two different, different timelines. Can you each talk about, you know, maybe each, each trio? Well, I guess it's not a trio. It's a duo. and It's hard to... Yeah. <laughs> Um, but just like you know, like you become a twin train, you know, um, getting to know each other when your life is in danger is different than getting to know each other when you're shooting a television show. But like, how is how is that process of like getting a feel for each other and like how does how was you know like how was the set like? I guess is my question. Just I feel like for us, our trio from day one, you know, remember like we had a bear. The bear. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. That was pretty. That was like uh, spawning. Um, yeah. I've heard Super of spawning. Like yeah. Day one, there was a bear. So well, so di so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, he, he tells it better. Day so one, to there was we this beautiful place in Vancouver called Pit Meadows, and uh, it's like you're deep in the woods, like very deep. And the, the, there was it was the scene where uh, the, where the kid with the gun comes out surprises us. Mari comes out and speaks perfect fucking Russian, which was insane that she learned Russian and it was wild. I mean, like I couldn't speak one word of Russian. And Mari comes out and she's like, Brrr, and Honors and I were like, oh my god, you're so much smarter than we are. <laughs> Never millionaires. Um, but so we. Up, up, up above where uh, the camera crew was, we had to go like kind of around this corner and get off camera, and then all of a sudden, Bax goes, who is the one of the ads? But you gotta, you gotta set up the wardrobe, I think, in the props. Uh, yeah, right. Um, I, I was wearing a weapon. Uh, the weapon doesn't fire, uh, <laughs> and the the wardrobe, like we're in these like insane gas masks, so you can't see anything either. And Bax goes, "Oh my God, there's a bear." And we look behind us, and there's literally a bear, like, from me to you. And it was like, holy shit, there's a bear. And my first move was like, gun. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, it just doesn't work. <laughs> and then, uh, and we then, have it on video. Yeah, we have a video, you and you deny it, but there, there's somebody in the video, everybody, the Canadians start clapping, saying, go away, like, you know, just bear, bear, I'm just sort of like trying to get, like scare it. And there's one guy in the video that's saying, go a bear, go away bear, go, go. Yeah, no, that's and me. I think because it's I know you. you. Because you're, spo you're supposed to say like, go away bear, bear, you're supposed to get big. That was the voice, that was you. Yeah. But you're like, uh, I'm like, this is not working. The bear starts walking towards us. And so it was like, I was like inviting the bear in for lunch. <laughs> And then yeah. and then and then a grip came by with an air horn, yeah. and the bear sort of just like slowly walked away. But that was the for, and that day really one. was and the way. day two. Like we could go on day, day two. Yeah. There was a we were like shooting the car scene. We were on the processing car, uh, and then we were in the front seat, me and Anders, and you were in the back seat. And then you were like, guys, it smells like like burning oh, rubber. And we looked outside, and it was like smoke coming out of our car. <laughs> yeah, so like the the tires caught on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about so, that. So yeah, we were like, well, how could you forget? It was so dramatic. I don't know. I just we blocked had, it out. We had like a bunch. Not that it wasn't a safe set. I'm just gonna say that we were completely <laughs> fine. But we had lots of things to bond over. Lots of adventures in true. our own right. I would say. Yeah. yeah, it was true. And and uh, so we, yeah, we had a blast. I mean. We it was only it was three of us, but you know uh, the other thing. Anders is a writer, um, written you know hundred shows of television. It doesn't matter whether you're writing comedy or whatever. If you're a writer and you're writing that many shows, you have to think about a lot of things. Mari is a writer, 
Um, she's written on all kinds of different shows and written her own things and developed things. Um, I've written on things, we've helped with this. It was just in my career, I've done some of that. And, uh, and so what was so nice is that usually you come to set and uh, there's actors, some great actors who come to set and they're like, I don't like the way that this is done. And you're like, okay, well, fuck, what do you want it to be? Should I, could you say this two weeks ago? Because now we're an hour behind schedule and you're just hating everything. And that never happened because they were always like so ahead of the game because they were conditioned to be ahead of the game. And that made life so much more enjoyable on set. Uh, it was so fun. We, we had, like, I had, I had a blast. That was my highlight because I wasn't with my dad that much. Like, I, I didn't get to be with him that much. It was just like, we're on the same thing. And so there were some days where we were just like, you know, alone, and it could get kind of lonely, and my family wasn't there, and so every time I got to go to set to work with Mari and Anders, it was a, a great joy for me. I just want to know if the 2015 crew can match a bear story. <laughs> well, we had different things up there on the glacier. Match the bear do you remember story. The, do you remember <laughs> watching that guy? Well, okay. They started roping stuff off up there. Yeah. Right? We're kind of looking at that. So what's that guy doing out there? Then there's a guy behind him with about a 20-foot pole. And I notice he's <laughs> looking, and then he's walking a couple of feet, and doot, doot, doot. knocks another couple of feet. Doot, doot, doot. <laughs> about three minutes later, I happen to look back at him, and he goes, whoop, and the pole just goes wham down. So there's where they were roping places off, you had the, that was, yeah, don't go there. <laughs> But we're, yeah. we're, we're running all over the place. And it was like, well, did you yeah. try it over here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little bit of that was kind of weird. Yeah. I was going to say that Anna told me earlier uh, when we were in the helicopter going up to the glacier and we take it back down, I'm afraid of flying. I'm especially afraid of being in a fucking helicopter. <laughs> what the fuck? And... He, the pilot, thought it would be cute to <laughs> turn the engine off while we're in the sky. <laughs> and then, like, I guess turn it back on. I don't even know what that means. Um, so I learned that today. So I did almost die. <laughs> I, I really wish we could keep on going, but I'm getting the rap signal, um, which is so sad. <laughs> Uh, but again, thank you everyone for staying and thank you to the panelists and the cast of the show. Uh, keep watching. It's Monarch, Legacy of Monsters on Apple TV Plus. And also please subscribe to the Ali Talks. Thank you. Thank you.